Welcome to Anselm Griffin's Vocational Series of YouTube Tutorials. Today we're looking at the independent t-test in MATLAB and you'll see I've given a link in the MATLAB script to one I just did in Excel. So it's the same test, the same data, it's just I've done it in two different packages. So just to give you some historical perspective, uh, students T uh, is named after a research scientist that was working for Guinnesses in the early 1900s in Dublin, Ireland, and his name was W.S. Gossett. And I am Irish, I live in Dublin, so I just thought I'd throw in that bit. So the independent t-test there is, there's a dependent and an independent variable. So the independent variable is the thing that causes the effect, that, that changes the dynamic, that determines an outcome. So let me just get my mouse for one sec. There we are. So the independent uh, here, and we have the first year of graduate salary. So you're looking at mechanical engineers one year out of college, and there are two groups. There's male and female. So the dependent um, variable is uh, wage or salary, and the independent variable is um, gender. And just to say, I took that, my, losing my mouse, I took that example from that uh, website there. Number of assumptions, the dependent variable should be continuous, like wage is obviously continuous. And assumption two, your independent variable should be two categories. And obviously, you have male, female, or whatever, or yes, no, or took the drug, did not take the drug. Assumption three. Uh, independent, and if you're wondering what that's about, you know, the typical example is that when you flick a coin, that has no determination of the outcome of the following flip of the coin. Number four, there should be no significant outliers. Uh, why? Because usually you do this test when the samples are small, say under 20, and if you had a big outlier, that could cause havoc with your test. Number five, your dependent variable should be normally distributed. Uh, and I've done that test in Excel, uh, a Kogganoff Smirnoff test. But it only has to be roughly normal, it doesn't have to be exactly normal. And number six, the variances of the two groups, this is for the independent, should go, and you can do that with an F test. Excuse me. Uh, we can either do a one tail test or a two tail test. So if you're doing the salary, one that we mentioned between the male and female, two-tail test that the null hypothesis is the wages of male and female would be the same, and then the alternative hypothesis that there's a difference. And a one-tail test, uh, you might suspect given recent uh, reports in the media, that uh, the one-tail test is that the underlying assumption is that the two are the same, and then that the males earn more than females, so that would be a greater than. There's the processes, so we're going to run through those six steps. And we're going to through those six steps to our worked example. And we have two groups, took caffeine, did not take the caffeine. And then you're looking at their RER rate, so it's a measure of CO2 produced to O2. So it's just, you know, whether, you know, uh, caffeine has an effect on energy from carbohydrates or fats. Okay, so let's go on. There are the numbers. We'll show you how to build those two arrays in MATLAB. Uh, H0, uh, the one I'm doing in MATLAB is a two-tailed test. In other words, there is no difference between the placebo and taking the caffeine. The dependent variable is the RER, and the independent variable is the caffeine, no caffeine. So the caffeine, no caffeine is the thing we think that causes the effect, and the dependent variable is the RER. Uh, the hypothesis here, or, or I'm only doing the one-tailed, or sorry, I'm only doing the two-tailed. That's here. And we assume it's a student T. The critical values are there. And we only use that graph to explain the results. Sorry for that beep. 
uh, there we are I just uh, let's publish that so I created two separate arrays there's the caffeine and there's the placebo so they're both one row by nine columns uh, the command in MATLAB is t-test2 it doesn't matter which is first and which is second and then we have these four possible return values so let's look at them one at a time h is the hypothesis so when it's zero what we're saying is uh, we have no reason to reject a null hypothesis the no, and by the way it assumes that we're carrying it out at five percent the probability value is 0 0.0634 and since 0.0634 is bigger than 0.055%, that's a, a reason why we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. The confidence interval, we're saying the difference between the two values, we're 95% sure that the, the difference in means between the two values lies between minus 13.0639 and 0.0. And 0 0.3972, so minus 13 to plus 0.39. And since 0 lies in that interval, that's another way of saying we have no reason to reject the null hypothesis. And there are some stats there. So just to explain what's going on, the T stat is 1.9948. Let's go back to my PowerPoint. So 1.9948 is about there. So remember we were doing a 5%. So any in black on the left, in black on the right. If our p-value was in either black region, we would have a reason to reject the null hypothesis. But if our value is between uh, minus 2.11 and plus 2.11, we have no reason to reject the null hypothesis. Let's go back to here and there we are 1.9948 okay i hope that helps thanks very much for listening